Okay, so we're going to do a standard deviation first and then the correlation coefficient. I'll put a little purple star here. My work in the table is going to be in purple for standard deviation. So hopefully you can map that across if you're looking at this later. Um, so here's the recipe component. When you get into the formula, and this is on the formula sheet, find x first. There's going to be a couple iterations of x that exist in two places, but that's x bar. Remember, x bar is just the mean. It's just four. This is our variable x. This is the one that represents each different data point. So find x, which should be right in the middle of the formula, and then work your way out using the table until you get to a point where you sum things together. So to find my standard deviation, the first thing I need to do is calculate x minus x bar. That's the first thing, and it's just here. So that's my number one. I'm breaking down the, from the inside out. So x minus x bar, keep in mind x bar is 4. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 5 minus 4 is 1. 4 minus 4 is 0. 7 minus 4 is 3. So there's my x minus x bar. You should find that these things are up to 0. And they do in this case because that's the, that's the whole premise of the mean. It should be the middle. So when you look at the difference from the mean, that's what it should mean. Now I'm going to calculate x minus x bar squared. Because that's the next thing that's told to me to do, to square those values. So over here, that's my number two. Step number two is to square. And so I get 9, 1, 1, 0, 9. The third step is to sum those together. So now I calculate my sum. This is the bit where I stop working on the table. Once I sum them together, I'm now just dealing with one overall sum. I don't have to do individual things to the individual terms. So I go... Uh, step number three, so this is step number one, step number two. Step number three is the sum of x minus x bar squared is equal to 9 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 9, which is 20. Everybody happy with that so far? And then I just find my standard deviation. So step four is to just finish it off. The standard deviation, um, which is sx, by the way, is equal to the square root of 20, because that's my sum, over n minus 1, n minus 1 is, there's five numbers, so that's 5 minus 1, 4, that ends up being the square root of 5, which ends up being about 2.24, I believe, or something like that, and that matches our answer there. So that's what they gave you. Sometimes in a question you'll get given certain values. That's excellent. I'm going to show you the whole thing so that you know how to calculate these things. But I can't reiterate enough that if you're asked to calculate the standard deviation from formula, in an exam, you go straight along to your formula sheet here, standard the deviation, there's the formula, and then you start at the inside and you build out. You move off the table when you hit that summing symbol, and then you start just doing an overall calculation. It's, it is a classic general maths complex familiar question. This is the 60 to 20 range, and realistically, if you practice this five times and you spread that across the year, it's a really easy, complex, familiar question. Everybody can do it. Calculate the standard deviation of a table. It's procedural. The recipe is there. You don't have to memorize anything. It tells you what to do. But it's complex for me because somebody looks at this. People look at this in the exam and they have a bit of a heart attack and fall over the ground. That's, it looks hard, but it's not really that hard. So you've just got to keep that in mind. Um, that's the first one. I've done my standard deviation. That's in purple. I'm going to do my, I call it CCR. The peak of laziness. I can't be bothered writing correlation coefficient. CCR, um, and there's the formula straight off the formula sheet. It's a little bit different to the one we built up yesterday, and by yesterday I mean Wednesday, um, because it's um, it's just rearranged a bit. But it actually looks a lot like the standard deviation formula, so it's not that hard. What we're going to do in red, we're going to continue the table on. I'm going to do that as my step one. I'm going to do x minus x bar over sx, I've just calculated sx, and I'm going to do that as my step two, y minus y bar over sy, and then I'm going to multiply them together as my step three, and then I'm going to sum that and multiply it by one over four. So let's do that now. Um, so I might just put a little, just trying to make this as clear as possible when you read it later on. There, I'll extend this down a bit. And we'll start working red right here. So the first thing I need to do is do x minus x bar over sx, which is going to be x minus, um, that's not right, 4 
over 2.24. I want to be as accurate as possible though, so I'm going to use this um, 2.24 in my calculator, which was the square root of 5. So um, x minus x4, what was, what was my x? 1 minus 4 is negative 3 over root 5. 3 divided by root 5 is equal to 1.34. And my next line, because I've got that number in now, I might just use it. y minus y bar over sy is equal to y minus 5. Remember these values were given to us up here. So 5 and 3.082. Um, so y minus 5 over 3.082. So now I'm going to, I'm sorry I'm zooming around, but I just want to make it big enough for you. I'm going to do that calculation for the y value for this pair of values that match together, and then I can do that multiplication as well. This is a bit trickier, but it is still just a formula it's given to you. So y is 2, so I get 2 minus 5 over 3.08, so that's 3 divided by 3.08, and that gives me 0.97. Three, and then I have to do the calculation of x minus x bar over sx times y minus y bar over sy. So the numbers get a bit more out of hand now, but it's still not too bad. That's 1.304. That's my first one. Now I'm going to get you to help me here because this is a bit out of hand, yeah? So could I get you to help me by doing a little bit of this each? Do you reckon we can do that? Grab a calculator. Um, follow what I've just done there. If I could get some people, it might be a little bit like a race. I don't mean it to be, but basically the first four people to tell me the answers, I'll write those up. But if I could have other people doing it as well, that will check it. So this first pair of numbers is x is 3, y is 5. I'd like to get those numbers for me based on these formulas and then multiply those two numbers to get this one. And I'd like that to be, uh, say, Noah to Alicia, if that's all right. Four people, five people there. That was bad counting on my part. Um, second group, the end of that table, you guys, can you do the third number, five and seven? Got that? Abby, you're in charge. Thanks for work. This table here, can you do four and two? Somebody work those out for me. And these guys here, can you do seven and nine? Um, yes, three and five. So have you got any numbers? Tell me. Oh, hold on. That should be negative, by the way. So that should be negative. Yeah, I'm like so, thanks, Lucas, for your encouragement. I didn't, I didn't want to say anything. I was like, no, I'm actually, I'm feeling highly motivated now. Thanks. <laughs> if at any point you feel like that you and your group of people don't know what you're doing, you're going to have to tell me sooner rather than later. I will find out when I don't get an answer, ever. Okay, cool. Thanks for telling me. So, five and seven is your, um, your numbers. So I need to do this one here. I need you to do the five first of all. Five minus four over 2.24. That will give me the first number. And then you get the seven for y. Seven minus five over 3.08. That will give me the second number. And then multiply those two together to get the third number. In a calculator. Okay. Lucas, you got any for me? No, you don't. What's the X one? Yeah, because you're doing X minus four or Y minus five. Um, yours, um, Kayla, yours aren't negative. Yours are positive. Kayla. Yeah? Yours are positive. Yes, one's zero, sir. Really? Yeah. Oh, because five minus five is zero. Yeah. Oh, your table got a nice easy one too. Which one's easy one? Which, yeah. Okay, so the first one's zero for you. Any other numbers? I don't care which table gives them to me. Oh, so yours is zero as well, Jack, here, but I want that number still. I want the second number still. 
Yeah, the wine. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, because I've already done that. You guys got the really easy one. Hey, okay, good work, you guys. Um, you guys got some numbers for me? That should be positive. And you know what? Let's have a look. We've got negative 0 0.45. This group. I one below the mean, you're one above the mean, so it's actually well, no, makes sense. No, no, this is this makes sense. That's good. That's the right answer. What's the second one? Last one? Two nine three, can I say that? Okay, cool. I'm just running out of space. So you're a long way away from the main call. Okay, thank you for that. Can I encourage you? This is this is part of what I spoke about yesterday, um, a little bit. And if I had more time, I could have spoken to you for another half an hour. But you need to know what you don't know. So if you just sat there in that session and you don't think that you could have contributed to your group, then you don't know how to do this and then you're missing out on a six, seven, eight mark question in the exam. So you need to make sure you know how to do it. And like I've just shown it to you today for the first time. So if you don't know how to do it right now, that's fine. If I show it to you another three times and you still don't know how to do it, that's also fine. The problem is if you don't ask. So you've got to make sure that if you don't know, that you do ask. Otherwise, we're gone. I might spot that you don't know if I happen to come across a formative assessment where you don't do it or something like that, but I can't tell right now. Okay, I suspect by some of the facial expressions I'm seeing around the room, that I have an idea of a couple of people that don't know, but um, I don't know for sure. So now, um, so it's just a formula. We've followed that formula. We've built those numbers. Um, we've built some important patterns, which is really good. The first pattern is that was 0 0.973. This is negative 0 0.973, negative, positive there. If you're equidistant above or below the mean, you're going to get the same number, just the negative swaps. That could help you with a question like this that's quite long. Second pattern, if you get some number that's the same as the mean, you get zero. And that means when you multiply these two together, you get zero. That's a nice pattern as well that will save you time. If you do five of these questions, you will see those patterns and it will save you time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you still have to probably build out the table. But if I, I'd be more than happy if you went, look, I'm running out of time. It's probably the least. Um, okay, so we've done those. Now we get onto this bit where we break away from the table because now we're calculating the sum of x minus x bar over sx times by y minus y bar over sy. And the sum is equal to um, negative 1.304 plus 0 0.293 plus 1.689, that's equal to 0 0.678. And then our correlation coefficient is equal to one quarter times 0 0.678 because it's one over five minus one. There's five numbers. N is the number of numbers in, you know, number of pairs of numbers in this case. So one quarter of this stuff, so I multiply that by 0.25 or divide it by 4 or whatever, I get a correlation coefficient of 0 0.1695. What does that mean about this set of data? It's, 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 it's going to be, it's pretty low correlation coefficient. So when we spoke about it yesterday, it's either going to be there's no pattern or it might just fall into that there's a weak correlation. But you have to keep in mind as well, though, and you'll get it. This is what your question will look like on the exam if you get one. You might not, but if you do, it'll look like this. We're not going to give you any more than five or six data points. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time doing monotonous same calculations. If you only do have five or six data points, it's not really enough to formulate an overall understanding. You've just got to keep that in mind. So five data points, a correlation coefficient doesn't have a lot of meaning. It was 100 data points, and that was a correlation coefficient. I could pretty surely and securely and quite happily say that mathematically there is no relationship between these two variables. That would be fine. 
Um, just quickly, there's some notes here. So if you don't have a calculator here, then you are welcome to jump on. This is just cut straight from your textbook. Um, if you do have your calculator, it does a load of stats. It's just a little bit hidden. It's not quite as easy to find it and obvious as the other calculator that the method students are using. So to do this, um, it says mode 2-2, two, two, but if you click on the mode button at the top, it comes up with comp, stat, or verify. So if you choose 2, now you're in stats. And then if you choose 2 there, it gives you the linear regression. And that's what this is about. We're doing a linear regression. So we've got these data points. What happened to my green pen? The only pen that's working well. This. Um, we've got these data points here. And the goal is to build a linear function that's as good as possible. We're going to talk about regression analysis over the next week or so. Um, the correlation coefficient represents how well this linear analysis fits. So you need to go into mode 2.2, two, which is linear regression, and then you need to enter your data. So I'm going to enter that data now. Um, the data was 1. I'm doing the X column now. You should be doing it too if you've got a calculator here with you. Um, 3, 5, 4, 7. It's easy to do the X column first and then go back up to the Y column. Um, 2, 5, 7, 2, 9. So I've built a table, mode 2, 2. A table comes up. I've built that table. And once I've built the table, um, I press, I leave, so it's saved. And I'll leave it by pressing AC. And now I can do the stat calculations. So um, the stat calculations are down the bottom above your one key. There's a little stat symbol. So you press shift one. That takes you to your stat calculations. And in this case, we want to do a regression analysis. So that's five, shift one, five. And we want to calculate the R value, shift one, five, three. And then you press enter to get the R value. And it comes up with 0.83. Different to what we got. Hmm. Very suspicious. Um, okay, it's different to what we got here. And interestingly, not only is it different to what we got here, it's one minus what we got there. It's the exact complement of what we got there. So I need to have a look at that because we followed that formula pretty well. Um, in the meantime, if you've got a, um, a TI or a Sharp, those calculator modes there as well. Um, and here's the last thing that I want to talk to you about. I probably won't do the example, but I'll show you this. This is the textbook's take on what would be reasonable and appropriate. But I think you also need to match this up with how much data there is in terms of the strength of your calculation. So if you get an R value, that is between negative 0.25 and negative and 0.25. This is not a strong correlation. In fact, we'd say there's no association. So we split it up into quarters, basically. That would be a fairly good guide. Although I would say that if you got 0.75, I wouldn't say that's very strong. I'd say more like 0.85 to 0.9 is starting to get strong. Um, but you've probably got to look at the context. And if it waves around, if we gave you one that came up with an R value of 0.76, we probably accept moderate or strong. And you might have a graph there to have a look at as well. Um, okay, I'm going to stop there because we're almost out of time.